All right, welcome back to Statement Games Live. Uh, my name is Nathan. I'm joined with Mark. What's going on? What's going on, buddy? Another week in the books here. Just trying to stay warm here in the Northeast. <laughs> yeah. Not necessarily get uh, you know frostbitten things like that. But I'll tell you what, I'm just getting a little I'm getting a little tired of of the shoveling. You know, um, you kind of get out there, you do it once, and it's like, all right, you know, it's winter time, it's cool, it's snow, and things like that. When you're doing it enough for like a, a fourth and fifth time over a span of like two and a half weeks, it's like, all right, enough, enough. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, at least we're not getting hit like Texas, and uh, I saw a video of Louisiana with uh, the bayou covered in ice. Uh, that was that was interesting. We're not we're not getting hit that bad, but uh, yeah, I did wake up to some snow, and we got a parking ban out here. So, um, yeah, it's. I mean, we're getting through it. It's almost March, you know. We're looking at spring here pretty soon, but. Uh, yep, yep. Yeah. But it, it's winter time. I mean, I feel like I do the same thing every single year. You complain about the weather, and at the end of the day, here there's really. I mean, you can't do anything about it. I guess from a northeastern perspective, I guess the, uh, you know, move to Florida if it's really that big of a deal. But you bear <laughs> yeah. through it. You get through kind of like, you know, a, a five or six week kind of like, you know, stretch. It's not that bad. And, and you go from there. Absolutely. Um, so this show, Statement Games Live, is presented to you by Statement Games Incorporated, the most innovative, innovative alternative free to play fantasy sports platform operating the gaming industry for gaming innovation. Our platform has been highlighted on ABC, CBS, Fox, and NBC. Uh, Mark, you want to go into a little bit about what this show is and what we're going to be offering people? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's a journey. We are two startups trying to carve out our little niche or our space within the fantasy kind of like our gaming space. We have a tremendous amount of ups. We also kind of like have our, our, our downs and I guess from a business side of things here, we want to put something out that keeps our viewers up to date on what we're actually seeing taking place within the sports gaming space. Maybe share a couple of different stories on what we've kind of like, you know, gone through, through, through the week or weeks, um, good or bad, you know, what's kind of like, you know, on our mind. And hopefully these little stories, you know, help other people out who are starting out in their own kind of like, you know, ventures or, you know, maybe people are just coming across and checking out our products and services for the first time here. They get a, a little bit more insight on what it is that we're actually doing, how we're actually doing it, and uh, and why. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, let's get into the gaming news. What do you got for us uh, this week? I mean, th there's, there's always a lot of stuff that's kind of like, you know, taking place. The big thing that I was taking a look at was how... I guess uh, the state of Arizona had some pretty advanced hearings, so there could be some news coming out of the state of Arizona from a sports gaming perspective here. I want to spend a little bit more time and uh, really kind of going to get my facts in place before I actually report on it like a little bit more. But uh, I, I think a lot of these stories week in, week out are, are, are pretty much repetitive and they're kind of like redundant. Um, another state looking to <laughs> get into right. the gambling space. You know, it's... It's coming. There's no kind of like in a way around it, regardless of how you feel about the subject of the topic. Um, it, it is something that will, will happen pretty much in every single state within the next five to 10 years. It's just a matter of who jumps on board sooner rather than later. And in this particular case here, we're, 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 we're seeing some good things come out of the state of Arizona. Um, there was also some other reports that kind of, kind of came out that actually showed that uh, from an online perspective, online sports gaming is, is increasing. And I, I it's no secret. I don't think it's kind of like, you know, any shock that anybody should be, you know, up in arms kind of like, you know, about here. I just want to I put a little asterisk kind of like, you know, on it. And that's from this, uh, from this perspective here. As we have more and more states jump on, bo on board here, the numbers have no other way but, but going up here. So that's why you're kind of like, you know, seeing the increase here. So if you're actually seeing, for example, you know, um, a state for the first time kind of going to launch a, a McDonald's franchise. Well, overall, <laughs> this is something yeah. that kind of like, you know, people want and people kind of like, going to flock to it. So because you had states like Virginia and Michigan and uh, some other things like that, Puerto Rico, you know, come online from a sports gaming perspective here, it's more opportunity who will have exposure to the product for the first time. And naturally they're, they're gravitating to it if they actually have the means. But with that mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, you know, point in mind here, 
I'll get into this a little bit more as we get throughout the short here, as go throughout the show here. But I was recently clicking on a call. Um, again, you know, full disclosure, it was actually with my, uh, I guess, contacts at Stadia Ventures. I know that we've talked about an opportunity that State in the Games has had with Stadia Ventures, kind of, like, you know, in the past couple of weeks. I'll get into that in a second here. And um, one of the takeaways that I took from our last conversation or sets of conversation was it's it's time for statement games to get a little bit more aggressive and standing at the top of their chairs and and, and shouting and, and beating people over the head with what our kind of like, you know, message is. Mm-hmm. So with that in mind here, I'm going to take a fresh kind of like, you know, step at it, which is, look, guys, it's 40 percent. I don't care who launches sports gaming. I don't care what new products and services that come online as it relates to sports gaming. The way you got to look at the opportunity is, is, is three different ways here. You have diehard sports gamblers who will naturally gravitate to those products and services if they become available, whether online or if a sports book opens up in their neighborhood and it's a reasonable driving distance. Ago. They're naturally going to just gravitate to those types of products. You also have brands and media companies that are creating content all in an effort to push people to gambling-related services depending on who they partner up with. That's kind of like, you know, what you actually see, for example, say with, you know, with Barstool and kind of like, you know, Penn Game. And organizations like this will do a great job in converting their base into sports gamblers. It's just kind of like, you know, a natural kind of, like, you know, progression. Um, you kind of like, you know, see, and we talked about this a couple of weeks ago as well, you know, uh, the whole Bally's organization, acquiring Monkey Knife Fight, partnering with Sinclair, that kind of like, you know, that steps or that series of steps or progressions on how, All three of those elements are working hand in hand of gaming provider, platform provider, content provider, working in harmony to push people into gaming related products and services. Regardless of how that metric works or how those series of steps take place, you are always going to have 40% of the casual fan base that will not participate in real money gaming. They won't do it because just take a look outside and see what's going on with the world here. You know, you actually have a pandemic that's still at the forefront of everybody's kind of like, you know, minds here. As a result of the pandemic, there's still a lot of people that are looking for work, struggling for work, or working on a limited capacity just because they're limited on what they can do and can't do here. As a result, discretionary income or the amount that people would typically have to spend on discretionary products and services and things like that, including gambling are not as high as they kind of like, you know, once were from a gaming perspective. That doesn't mean that they don't like to compete. It doesn't mean that their interest in sports has diminished. And that's where we feel that statement games has an opportunity to capitalize on revenue. That's currently being left on the table. People don't know how to monetize on a free-to-play kind of, like, kind of service, unless there's a physical process of somebody depositing cash into an account to gamble on something here, that seems to be kind of like the buzz within the gaming industry and having people do that over and over again. The argument that we're actually making here is that the amount of times that people are actually doing that today is completely different from what it was last year or the year before that should they have had the opportunity to participate in these types of services. And the reason for that here is they don't have the means or they don't have as much Mm -hmm. as the means as they once kind of, you know, did. And that's where we feel that our solution and our services showing brands, how they could capture or generate revenue off of those eyeballs and provide them with a service that stimulates growth engagement is, is a viable story that should be told and in our opinion not enough companies are capitalizing on it effectively absolutely yeah no and and going back to what you had said prior about um you know what kind of the if you build it they will come uh when when a new brand enters the the market it's kind of the sonic effect um you know you you get the the advertisement of it's coming and then they build a Sonic down the road and then <laughs> parking and traffic is terrible for three months <laughs> while everyone has to try it out. So, yeah. and that's the same with sports gambling. Um, 
you know, I we talked about how Michigan just opened up and I've got family out there. My like my my father who's had a stroke and like is partially um, you know, paralyzed sits on his phone and he he plays some of these games. Like he's never gambled in his life. Uh, but Michigan, you know, just just made it made it possible for him to do it on his phone and he absolutely loves it. So uh, you know, it, it's people it's unexpected. People will will come into the market that you're not thinking of. And um, while there's plenty of people that are willing to to pay for you know the gambling and all that stuff, there are also so many people that want to do it, just don't have the funds to, and resources to do it. So, or they might just need a little bit of an educational process. We've talked about this before as well. Go take a look at what's taking place in the horse race industry. I mean, that was once the more predominant kind of sport in this country. I mean, yeah, I'm kind of like, you know, going back to the twenties and thirties and things like that here, but in the grand scheme yeah. of things here, it's, it's not like it's that kind of like, you know, long ago, take a look at how that industry or that sport is kind of like, you know, doing today. People will naturally gravitate towards that product during what the Kentucky Derby Preakness Belmont stakes. Maybe if you're kind of like, you know, avid for, uh, you know, the breeders cup and kind of like, you know, things like that. There's other big stake races that are a lot of fun that people, you know, keep an eye on and things like that here, but casual sports fan doesn't gravitate to that. Not because they don't like it. They're intimidated or they don't have the education on what an exact box kind of like, you know, means how do I take a look at a racing form and, you know, understand the stats and the lines in a way that I can actually, you know, uh, come up with a, a, a theory for, for the race, um, a theory that I'm willing to kind of, you know, spend a dollar or two to kind of, like, you know, dollars kind of, like, you know, on it. I'm willing to kind of do it every once in a while for fun and for luck and things like that Mm -hmm. here. But if you think that the sports gaming space is going to naturally kind of, uh, you know, realize its full potential without educating people on what kind of, you know, prop betting is and how to kind of, you know, organize different kind of, you know, things into a sequence so that it can naturally progress into terms like exact is parlays, things like that here. It's, it's it's not going to happen. You know, I mean, and I'll be I'll be completely honest. Um, you know, I'm avid sports fan. Uh, I do gamble here and there with mm-hmm. my friends and and online. I have no idea what to do if someone was like, let's go bet on the horses. Like, I don't know where to go. I don't know what to bid. And I wouldn't have any idea what, you know, you would just basically said when you're breaking down uh the different types of bids like there is an education that is needed before i'm able to get to that um that level of commitment with my money you know yeah, so it doesn't uh, mean you don't like horse racing right it doesn't right. mean that you're not gonna have an interest in it there's nothing and, uh, out there that's mine, educating you or yeah. kind of like you know giving you almost like a, you know an opportunity to get a couple of practice rounds in this is what we're doing, and this is kind of like you know what we're kind of like you know solving as as an organization. So, it's it's something that I am going to be getting a little bit more aggressive with that with that message because good. I think it needs to be told. I think uh, there's certain people within the industry that are completely missing the boat. Uh, pie in the sky, the sexy product and service and things like that is is gambling. People get a little naturally intimidated by it because. All right, you know what? Well, there's some pretty big players in the space with deep pockets here. How are you gonna how are you gonna compete with that here? And think about it from that kind of like perspective here. Um, big players, deep pockets, great job with traditional DFS, great job at introducing gambling kind of related services here. I mean, that that's a pretty big bear, regardless mm-hmm. of how big or how much money the organization kind of like, you know, is, to kind of like, you know, deviate from that core, and then also, you know, imagine kind of like, you know, making the transition from the U S into Europe and vice versa. Some of the European kind of like, you know, game is coming into, you know, the, uh, into the U S here. What about the cultivation process? What about the person who can, you know, what you know, wants a Super Bowl box, you know, just on, on, mm-hmm. on, uh, what February the 3rd. Is that usually the day of kind of like the Super Bowl or the first Sunday kind of like in Febu- yeah, first February, Sunday of February. Yeah. What are you Which... doing to cultivate that or, or, or to get them kind of like, you know, into, all right, you know what? I took a Super Bowl box. You know, I- I'll take you know this player prop as a over under you know statement in the first half or something like that. Where is the 
natural cultivation process taking place here and the industry is missing the boat on it and if i have to scream at the top of the empire state building i'm going to start collecting and doing it because there's revenue that's being left on the table um, you can generate revenue through ads through data through subscription services all those different things things that people naturally understand and you can do all those things while you're getting them ready to hopefully one day make that first deposit into a real kind of like, you know, money gaming account. And there's not enough companies out there. I don't know of anybody who's kind of like, you know, I hear the arguments all the, all the time, you know, how are you different by such and such? But, uh, you know, I'm going to start hitting you over the head with a two by four on, on how we're going to get different from some of these companies, just like we showed how we were different from, you know, monkey knife fight and things like that. So mm -hmm. uh, let's keep doing what we're doing and uh, just be on alert. Because yeah, that message absolutely. is going to get bolder and stronger as we uh, get deeper into this year and start creating content and, and creating more content. For sure. Uh, so with that, why don't you go into a little more of like the news of statement games? What's been going on this week? Yeah, so uh, it's a big week of hockey. You know, we we we're, we're coming off the uh, the Wednesday night connected kind of like a live stream with with Tarps of Sports. Um, so that partnership that we're currently doing here. So again, you know, touching on the topic of traction here, <laughs> Statement yeah. Games has another cool little partnership going with another network called Tarps of Sports. They pretty much work with us on all of the Wednesday night connected kind of like hockey games, and we'll continue to do it throughout the year. But this weekend coming up here. Hockey's going outdoors. So there's two connected big mm -hmm. games, one taking place on Saturday, another one taking place on Sunday. We'll be creating, uh, making pick shows around the NHL going outdoors. I mean, if you, if you had a chance, if even if you're not like a hockey fan, things like that, maybe just, you know, Google a couple of different images, but uh, it's a very scenic scene. It's taking place mm -hmm. on a, a nice kind of like a you know, golf course that overlooks, uh, you know, the mountains and, um, you know, and, and Lake Tahoe. So yep. it's it's going to be you know pretty cool. We'll we'll dive into that in a different thing, but I will definitely drop those links within this show so that people can kind of like you know, check out our making pick show, which will be featured around two connecting hockey games. Um, I've also had a little bit of an issue with Google this week, oh, so no. it doesn't necessarily affect anybody that has already downloaded the Statement Games app. It affects the new person who is potentially trying to download the android app connect within google basically google has pulled us from the from the google play store uh and we have to update a, a privacy policy they, they came up with oh, uh, yeah. a modification for the thing here so until we can like an update that and i gotta go into the google play console cut and paste some terms and conditions and things like that and it's simple but i have to get a tech person involved with the process which yep. is a fucking pain in the ass so, so this goes into a little bit of like when people think of okay like i'm gonna launch a website i'm gonna launch an app or whatever they think like you do it and then you're done no. and this is where you know people like you know on my neck of the woods where i i do web design and and all that and i actually offer you know managed hosting and managed um you know, this is where that management comes in because something always comes up. There's always an update that happens or or some sort of thing changes. And if you don't know what, you know, is going on, you, you got to get someone involved. So, uh, yeah, no, it, it happens and it, it sucks when it does. Man, I, I had uh, randomly my whole website go down because of an update overnight. So yeah. I was telling you about that. It, yeah, yeah, that's right. It, just, it happens. And you got to have someone on on hand that you can just call and, and get it fixed. Launching a website, launching kind of like, you know, an app is uh, is just it's just kind of like you know, the starting point. Do there, there was another set. You know what? I shouldn't even mention it, but uh, I mean, I, I would mention it. I just can't remember the name. I'm not sure if it was FanDuel or DraftKings or something like along those lines, but they actually had some. Actually, you know what? It was the NHL app. I'm sorry. So I, okay. I'm not bashing. There was an issue with the NHL.com app the other day. Um, we were actually talking about it on our live stream this this past Wednesday. So look, guys, it's it's not just us who kind of like mm -hmm. have, you know, challenges and problems. Um, some of the biggest media companies in, in the world and some of the biggest sports leagues in the world have issues with technology like, you know, from, from, from time to time. So yep. the launch of a website, the launch of, kind of, like, of an app is literally just kind of like the starting point. You're always making modifications and updates to, to you know, make it better. And 
sometimes the pipes break. What are you going to do? You got to call in the plumber and get it fixed. There's, there's no other yeah. way around it. And, and sometimes technology just advances like uh, browsers and hosting providers upgrade their, their servers and the, the languages that they are using. And if your website is only maintaining the same level of infrastructure, like if you were to go back to websites from like the nineties and compare them to now, you know, if you were still trying to put out one of those type of websites, you couldn't do it. It would not be supported. So just like, you know, your phone upgrades, your computer upgrades over time, if your website doesn't maintain that, um, you don't end up having a website. You know, it, it will get outmoded. So you got to you got to keep up with it and, and keep going. And and I mean, if you're talking about problems with technology, I mean, look at the PS network. How many times have they been hacked? How many credit cards have been, you <laughs> yeah, know, yeah. released to the public? Whether it was Home Depot or Target or, or, or yeah. something like that. I mean, security is another kind of like an old thing, too. But um, I mean, yeah, I mean, some of the other things, too, you think it's kind of like, you know, simple. We, we were talking about, um, hey, look, you know what? There's a blog that complements statementgames.com here, which is actually starting to index, you know, pretty nicely and, and generate some kind of, mm-hmm. you know, some def- decent traffic from us and, Obviously, we utilize content as a way to convert people into statementgames.com. And just a simple process of kind of like, you know, taking a wildcard SSL certificate and pointing it to the domain here is, it's simple, <laughs> but problematic. It should be it's simpler. <laughs> as the person that's seen the back end and tried to do it, um, it should be simpler. And Amazon, I got a problem with you. <laughs> Uh, AWS it's... is. I'm not going to say it because we are reserving certain words for making picks episodes, and this is supposed to be a little more professional. So, yeah, um, yeah, we'll, it is. We'll, it is dog we'll poop. Save it. <laughs> but uh, other than that, just kind of like you know, leading up to it here, um, I know I kind of like, you know teased it like a little bit here. Um, again, you know, it's one of those things in where. You have your ups, you have your downs, a little bit of a, a down week. Actually, I'll call it like a um, a down, but a down with some light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, I guess that's kind of like the best way that I can, I can go ahead and phrase it. So uh, we spent a lot of time, a lot of effort. We worked very closely with the Stadia Venture guys here. We went through a gauntlet, but that's the best way that I can kind of like you know, describe it. Um, a lot of kind of like, you know, intense due diligence, a lot of conversations, a lot of presentations, a lot of you know one-on-one sessions with uh, with prospects, and you know just going through the process of flushing out some opportunities. Um, make a long kind of like a story short, we were shortlisted into their top ten uh, of companies, startups that would have an opportunity to work with them a little bit more closely uh, this spring, and uh, we missed the cut. We, uh, we we did not we did not get in. I'm announcing this on Statement Games Live for the first time, but there will be a um, an email newsletter that goes out to our investors and, and key kind of, kind of stakeholders with a little bit kind of, kind of more detail. If you're interested in, in getting on that list, just of you know updates of what's taking place in Statement Games at an investment level or from more of a business kind of perspective, it's different from the newsletter that goes out to end users, letting them know, you know, what's available for play for Statement Games and uh, you know pre prime time kind of, you know, games that are going to be featured on the statement games platform. It's a completely separate thing, but we'll get into some more detail about that. And I guess some of the feedback that we actually received on why we didn't get in and I'll start with the bad and escalate over to the good. Uh, we're pretty much like, you know, three things. One, it seemed like there was a couple of, uh, you know, questions or, or there was, I guess they were, the way that they phrased it was at this point in time, there was more questions from our, I guess, stakeholders, investors, and mentors, then they're working like, you know, answers. So I guess one of the takeaways that they were kind of like looking at is, okay, you know what, cool idea, good stuff, like the way that these guys communicate, like the story that they're actually telling, but there were more questions on how they would help as opposed to that snap and say, you know, I can help these guys do X. Mm -hmm. Uh, So again, it kind of like, you know, ties into, well, if that's the case and that's the feedback that we're getting back to, I am literally going to start beating the, the snot out of people kind of like with what our message is here. Um, right. Again, it's just kind of, kind of some constructive kind of, like, kind of feedback. So was it necessarily a bad thing? But when you kind of like, you know, have other organizations and where it's pretty clear and direct on how they can actually, you know, help, 
uh, those organizations, which I'm not sure who they are as of yet. Um, as a question, how the, many people get into like are successful into their program? Like, do they five. take just the top? Okay, five. Gotcha. Well, as as far as I know, um, yeah, they told me it was it, it was five. Okay. Um, so there was kind of like you know that there was some kind of like you know, some question on. Okay, you know what, and this is what I didn't. There, there was some question, not necessarily on our traction, but there was some question specifically in regards to our retention. Um, basically, what are our retention rates, and how are we coming up with those numbers? So I can basically go ahead and state that statement games, as of right now, has about a thirty percent retention rate. Um, but the way that we define retention is completely different from somebody else. So if we're going to actually have those conversations a little bit more in depth we need to agree on with what the partner that we're speaking with or the prospect that we're actually speaking with on or what kind of like defines retention. If you think about a statement games, we only run prime time games. It's not like we run every right. single, you know, Lions game or Giants game, Yankees. It's, it's, it's nationally televised kind of, kind of games. Um, and we're, we're, we're a startup. We're kind of like in a limited. So we can like define retention as somebody who plays about one or two games per month. I think it's kind of like an unfair to say, Hey, you know what, Nathan, how come you're not playing every single day? Well, you're not a fan mm -hmm. of every single game. That's kind of like, you know, on national kind of like, you know, TV. Um, yeah. it's one of the challenges that we're trying to solve with, um, sports radar, but different story kind of like for a different day. But basically when you take a look at our base, um, we will actually see that of our base, all the people within our base will play anywhere between one to two games per month, about 30% of the time, every single month. And that kind of like an array, kind of like an oak rose, mm -hmm. which I feel is extremely you know, productive given how we're operating the business. But we can get more into that yeah. here, and I will um, go ahead and do that. And they also kind of like, you know, we're saying, okay, you know what, we like this whole white label or this licensing concept of statement games. However, we would like to see kind of like, you know, some more traction to that. But the way I'm looking at it is, is, is like this. It's a pretty simple message, guys. I mean, take a look at statement games. And the reason why I want you to take a look at statement games, is because when we've had initial conversations with brands, teams, leagues. And if you kind of like you remember years ago, you know, I was working with Kevin Harrington, the original, one of the original sharks on, on Shark Tank. Mm -hmm. One of the things they kind of said, you know, build your product, launch it, operate, get some traction kind of like, you know, going. And then we can actually make the case for kind of like, you know, for, you know, white label licensing solutions, which is exactly kind of what we did here. It's mm -hmm. hard for me to expect. Um, and I've never actually kind of, I, I haven't seen this done successfully at a high level. Uh, with the market basically taking a look at a prototype in the form of paper right. and saying, hey, look, you know what? I get it. Let's go ahead and kind of like do a pilot. They want to see a living, breathing product within the marketplace. And that's kind of like, you know, what we did. So we launched the product, built it up, worked out the, uh, the bugs, which I think is kind of like, you know, fair, as opposed to developing a pilot, not launching it, expecting some type of team, league, other organizations take possession of it and then basically, you know, let me, I guess, use them as kind of like my guinea pig. I felt like, you know, we were the best kind of, kind of guinea pig kind of, you know, for that. Right. So, um, yeah, you know, but, you know, I guess you're at a point is, now where it's, it, you've got to expand and you've got to con consider like how this looks for, you know, you've got your example of, what the what the I'm product the example. is i'm the pilot program yeah. from from a licensing perspective yeah i'm kind of like you know, the pilot so basically you're in, in one hand it's go out and kind of like, you know get some traction but then on the other yeah. hand not only get kind of like your traction here but launch a pilot program well i am the pilot program so that's the yeah. message that i want to go ahead and convey here this is not something that's a uh um, a theory or an idea yeah. this is a pilot program I could make a decision at some point in the future and where, hey, you know what, all the BDC stuff that I'm doing today either gets put in hold or scrapped in favor of a B to B model. Because let's face yeah. it, the New York Yankees, the Detroit Lions, the New York Rangers, the Dallas Mavericks, they have much more eyeballs than I have at this specific point. I got the technology. I got a unique value proposition. I got a way that basically engages your fan base as well as educates them on gaming right here it is 
take it. Let's rip yeah. out all references to statement games, replace it with your logos, your marks, your look, your feel. Let's take the features that you can see today within statement games and go through a checklist. I want this. I don't want this. And let's develop kind of like a pilot program. So that's kind of like the approach that we're going to be taking and moving kind of like forward. Um, yeah. We'll get into that as we move forward. But uh, on that note here, uh, the door is not closed with Stadium. Uh, we're continuing to have conversations with them. They've already um, encouraged us and are encouraging us to basically go through the process again, which is in May, which is not kind of like all that far off. And then in the process, as we, you know, work towards the May application, kind of like, you know, date, so on and so forth, um, they feel that they can make a couple of introductions in the short term with teams, leagues, and things like that in an effort to push this pilot. Uh, right. They're also introducing us to a program in which we have an opportunity to, to, to pick up on a, like a 25 K grant. So we'll, we'll kind of like, you know, see what happens. Um, and as a result of that here, we've met some great people within that, that, uh, that cohort or through that, that, that process. So it is kind of, you know, official right now. I mean, there is, you know, just think of the major players within the marketplace kind of like, you know, right now. Um, we are now having secondary and third conversations with their innovation and investment teams. And nice. as those opportunities flush out, we'll keep everybody posted. But kind of like in a selfish way, what we're getting from Stadia right now with some of the things that we're hoping to get kind of go through the program. So it stinks in that we're not necessarily going to be able to work with them hand in hand right now. Mm -hmm. But we're also getting some pretty good introductions and building traction. Should I dare say that uh, without necessarily being in the program right now. So that's. Yeah. You're getting some benefits just from having gone through the process and, and done everything. And, you know, it's, it, it's everything, you know, it, it's just a matter of, you know, you got to take one step at a time, keep moving forward. And, and that's what it is in, you know, this, this lifestyle, the entrepreneurial and, and all of that stuff with our businesses, just making sure that we're pushing forward. So uh, it, it's one of those things in where it's, uh, it's, it, it's a no for now. Right. Um, and look, um, I'm going to, I'm going to be, you know, beating down some, some doors a little bit more aggressively moving forward. Um, as far as I'm concerned, the gloves are off, you know, I will, hound these people for the rest of their fucking lives until um until you know we get the result that we're actually looking for so that's that's the only way that i can explain it for now so um it's a little short and sweet type of like you know nugget of truth but uh, that's the way i'm kind of like you know looking at it it's this stuff is hard you know business mm -hmm. is hard startup life is kind of like you know hard and you can you know make a a conscious choice to let some of these things kind of, you know, keep you down. But as, as you can actually see, as, as certain doors close, other doors open. If you just know where to look for them or know where to know where to knock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's always, um, nothing's ever completely out. Nothing's ever completely done. And, you know, there's always the ability to come back around and, um, you know, try again. So that's all I got for this week. Unless you got all righty. Well, uh, yes. Yeah, so make sure you're following uh, so at Statement Games on all social media. Make sure you watch the Making Picks episode um, on our YouTube channel, uh, Statement Games Inc. And uh, obviously, make sure you're playing Statement Games on mobile as well as desktop. So uh, with that, Mark, catch you next week. Catch you next week.